Good morning. <clears throat> Is this thing on? Can you guys see and hear me? Let me know in the chat or um, where's the chat? There's the chat. Let me know if you can hear me, see me. Morning, Stell, Ray and Cheryl. Looks like we've got a small group this morning. Uh, hope your Tuesday morning is as good as mine. Um, welcome to the Facebook ads webinar. Um, quick question. Does anyone actually have any, um, have you done any Facebook ads before? Let's, let's start there. Does anybody run Facebook ads and also tell me what sort of business you run? That will give me a bit of an indication of what I'm going to, what direction I'll take this in. See and hear me. That's good. I'm going to share my screen in a second if I can find the right screen. There we go. Okay, so you're new, Cheryl, to Facebook ads. Uh, who else have we got? Oh, yeah, Stella, I think we've had a session a couple of months ago. Yeah, I'm pretty sure um, I remember that one um okay oh we did perfect and ray is just at the point of starting to post publicly okay cool all right so facebook ads um in a nutshell facebook is one of the biggest platforms online and it pays off to be seen by your potential clients right um there's a one distinction i'd like to make quickly so between google and facebook or any social media the the biggest difference is that social media team like seems to attract more impromptu buyers or people that are sort of like hey never really knew that uh, this existed or did i need this and um you know they might actually turn into a buyer or a client or a customer whereas on uh, google obviously people are specifically looking for a service or a product or a supplier that can actually help them with the thing that they need so when we get into facebook ads um typically what we see is if you're for example a coach i know that um coaching consulting etc um still that's what you're doing is a dementia support service okay so essentially um the whole thing it comes down to marketing and what i mean by that is your marketing funnel so first and foremost you need to understand who your ideal clients are right so if you understand who you want to work with and who you're talking to it makes it easier for you to run any ad on any platform um simply because essentially what you can do here is get in front of somebody and take them from a uh, somebody who might be problem unaware or solution unaware uh, to somebody who now starts thinking about, hey, I've seen this ad about, um, you know, cancer counseling, for example. Uh, so the ad that you would put out still would be something along the lines of, hey, you know, um, did you know that there's a somebody like me out here who helps people transition through a difficult period in their life, et cetera, et cetera. And, and that ad essentially will uh, open their eyes or make them aware of the fact that there is somebody like you or a service like yours out there and they uh, potentially start looking into is this something that i would want to pursue now there's no um, sort of rule of thumb in terms of how you would run your ads it really comes down to understanding your marketing messaging first and foremost so you need to know who you're talking to you need to know what they're looking for, what they're hoping to get, and then you need to provide that. And then the only job that your ad will have is to get a click. And what I mean by that is the ad needs to be uh, enticing enough or make people curious about what's next. Um, in some cases, this could be, um, you know, you're sending them to a landing page that has an offer. Um, could be, uh, you know, uh, or a discovery call, for example, for, for you still, where people can jump in and say, well, I want to actually have a chat with you on the phone to see if this service is for me. If you'd be selling products, uh, you might sell them to a product page where they can then see, is this a product, you know, does the description match my expectation? Uh, is the price point correct? Uh, or at least within my range, et cetera, et cetera. So the ad, the only job an ad has is to get a click. Um, doesn't matter how good you are at Facebook ads, if the follow-up, the next part of whatever sales funnel you have in place isn't connected properly or doesn't actually do what it needs to do, uh, it doesn't matter how many clicks you get, you're still uh, going to miss out on clients. So uh, I just want to start off with that to make sure that you understand that it's not a magic bullet or magic wand, um, silver bullet, and it's really uh, just a part of uh, a bigger picture that you need to have in place. So make sure that you uh, go into this uh, session understanding that the ad is just an ad and the ad only has to get a click. Now, obviously, there's a few things we can do with these ads to make sure that they work really well. 
things like retargeting certain people. Um, we're going to be talking about the Facebook pixel, the tracking, so we understand who's actually interacted with what page, et cetera. And then I'll give you an example of uh, what the inside of your ads manager would look like. Is everybody okay with that? Uh, and feel free to ask me any questions during the session. I'll check the uh, the chat from time to time to make sure that I'm not missing anything. Um, so having said that, I'm just going to jump in and I'll show you exactly what Business Manager is. Now, Business Manager is essentially the tool or the suite that uh, Facebook wants businesses to use if they want to start running ads. And it gets a bit confusing because there's also an option to run ads in your personal account. So the distinctions here are you'll have a you need to have a, a Facebook profile first and foremost, just a personal profile, which means you have an account with Facebook. Now, with the profile, you can um, create an, a page for your business and you need to have a page in order to run ads, because essentially the ads need to be associated with that page. They're not associated with your personal profile. Um, having said that, Facebook also has a ads option for personal profiles only, which this is where it gets confusing. So essentially, when you sign up with a new Facebook account, you already have an ad account as well. But that's not necessarily the ad account you would want to use for your business. So business manager is essentially the entire suite of tools that they give business owners to start managing all their, their stuff. And this could be all their meta accounts, so WhatsApp, Instagram, etc. So all of that lives in here. So this might look a little bit overwhelming, especially when you start out or even look at mine, because I've got a whole bunch of, uh, I've got clients in here, I've got um, test accounts in here, I've got my own accounts in here. So there's a lot of stuff happening in mine. But if you essentially would log into business.facebook.com and you start off from scratch, this will all be empty. And essentially you'll have a business account here, which means that I'm just going to jump into my business account here. And underneath that business account, you'll see that all the um, bits and pieces that come with it are part of this. So under users, let's say you've got the staff member who would be managing um, your, your ads that would be added to your business account here. Uh, you can have a partner. So for example, people would invite me as a uh, partner into their business account to manage their ads for them. So my private clients will actually uh, basically add me, um, they connect me up. So I don't actually have direct access to the business manager, but they add me as a partner. Um, then underneath the account section here, this is where essentially all your assets live. So you've got your pages. Now you'd basically just have one page here for your business. If you just have, you know, the one page and the one business online, then from that page, you'll also have underneath an ad account. And now, like I said before, the ad account is associated with your page. So as soon as you run ads, essentially they'll, Facebook is going to say, which, which page is this associated with? Like that needs to be, uh, in there as well. Um, Business assets groups, that's not really interesting for you guys at the moment. So Instagram accounts, obviously, when you have an Instagram account, you would add that in here as well, um, because that means that when you set up your initial ad, you can then tell Facebook, I want you to show this ad on Facebook, but I also want you to show the same ad on Instagram, for example. Uh, same goes for WhatsApp. If you add a WhatsApp account here as well, you can run ads on there. Now, the third thing that's important is your underneath your data sources, your pixel. And your pixel is essentially your tracking code. And your tracking code means that when we, when we run ads, um, we have that tracking code installed on every single page on, the, on our website. And Facebook can see what a Facebook user is visiting and what they're doing and how long they're visiting and what sort of device they came from and all that kind of stuff, right? This is important because once we start running ads, um, Facebook learns from what's working and what's not working. So let's say you're selling a product and we start getting sales and Facebook can start tagging the people who did, went all the way through the checkout. So now Facebook can see um, these 50 people have actually made a purchase this week. And what they're going to do to be uh, more specific with their targeting is they're going to look at those 50 people, those 50 conversions, and then look at all of those and see, okay, what are the um, the overlying data point, the data points here? Like what's similar between these 50 people? And they're making a virtual profile, so to speak, to understand that, hey, all these aspects that we can see in terms of uh, browser history, um, you know, marital status or relationship status, have they got kids, no kids? Um, there's a whole lot of information that Facebook has on all of us. And what they do is they start targeting your ads to people that are very similar <clears throat> to the people that have already converted. Does that make sense so far? 
So Facebook really learns from what happens with their ads. And as they progress, they get smarter in terms of who to target. So let's say you've got a big audience of a million people you want to get in front of. Uh, at first, it's a bit of a scattergun approach, but then as time progresses and they start getting more events coming through, uh, Facebook then starts pointing your ads towards the people within that million that they believe are very, very similar to the people that are already taking the action that you wanted them to take. All right, cool. Um, so very important. I see a lot of people starting off with Facebook ads and the pixel, you know, it gets thrown in the, the too hard basket and um, they don't know how it works. And they just basically run ads without the pixel. And what it means is that Facebook will keep throwing spaghetti at the wall. And sometimes you get lucky, but more often than not, you're basically just going to sink your budget into Facebook and not really getting any results. So super important that you have the pixel. All right. Now, some of the things that we're going to look at next is I, the first thing I'm going to look at is ads manager itself. So when we start running ads, um, the first thing Facebook basically asks you for, let me just delete this one because this is from last week. This is, by the way, a blank account. So this is just for, for um, uh, this webinar. And what we see here, and this might look familiar to some of you, and some of you might go like, hey, this is completely different. Now, there's two reasons for that. Um, Facebook is always testing different layouts, which means that some people will actually get a different layout than other people. And they basically, they're always testing to see what works better and what, what works um, less. And then over time, they roll out the changes to other people as well. So don't get confused. Uh, it might look different, but the actual structure is the same. So all the words, the naming convention they use is always going to be the same. You can see up here, there's three tabs, right? So the main tab here is campaign. Then there's another tab here, which is called ad sets. And then the third one is your ads. Now, campaign level is essentially where um, I'm going to jump into that. I'm going to show you how that look, what it looks like. Campaign level is essentially where you set your objective. And you can see here, Facebook will give us uh, quite a few different options. And I'll walk through that. So awareness, if I say to Facebook, look, I want you to make this an awareness objective. It means that they're trying to get your brand out there as much as they can. Um, not necessarily optimizing for conversions as in sales and inquiries and that kind of stuff. But the, the trade-off is even though you're not targeting specifically for uh, people to take action on a certain thing, the, the brand awareness that comes with this is a lot cheaper to run because uh, most advertisers will actually try to optimize for events like purchase uh, because that's more valuable to them. But you're also going to pay more for that simply because it's it's essentially an auction the way it works. And Facebook is going to put their hand up and say, who wants to pay more for you know, having their ad being shown to this person at this time? So awareness is usually a, a pretty cheap one to get started with. And you can see on the bottom right here, um, it's got reach, brand awareness, video views. If I just select that one, that will stay. So reach is essentially reaching the maximum of number that might be interested in your brand. Uh, brand awareness is reach people who are more likely to remember your brand. Video views is if you have actual video ads, um, Facebook is going to try to get your, your video in front of people who are known to Facebook to watch more than the average user. And then, uh, so for example, store location awareness. Um, the next one here is traffic. And traffic is essentially good for link clicks, landing page views, messenger and WhatsApp messages to start a conversation and phone calls. So depending on the objective you choose, um, as we get to the next level, which is going to be the ad set and then your ad uh, tab, depending on the objective you choose at the beginning, at the top, which is your campaign, some functions and features might be not available, uh, depending on what you pick and choose. Now, traffic is a tricky one. Um, quite often, uh, link clicks is, is uh, the default preferred thing that most new advertisers would use. The problem is that link clicks is just that. It's just a link click, right? So Facebook is going to send your ads to people in the audience that you've told them to go to. Uh, and they're going to try to get your ad in front of people who they know just like to click on links. Doesn't necessarily mean that these are actually loading up your page. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're actually going to take action that you're trying to get them to take. And uh, whilst it's a little bit cheaper, it also means that quite often this is a, a lower quality of, of conversion simply because... Um, yeah, the link click is just a link click. Facebook is really just going to try to have that objective. They don't care what happens after that link click. Landing page views is probably the one that I would go for um, if you get started, because what happens is this basically means that once you have your pixel installed on your website, Facebook can track if somebody clicks on the link, then goes to your page and actually loads the entire page on their screen. And that's basically the cutoff point there where Facebook says, hey, we now know for a fact that that person has seen 
your website or your page that you send them to. That all still makes sense. Um, so that's a little bit more expensive. And, and the, the closer you get to a, a valuable uh, conversion for you as a business owner, which would be an inquiry, a phone call, a sale or a sign up or whatever it might be, the closer you get to those things, the more expensive it's going to be. Because like I said before, uh, it's an auction and you're bidding against everyone else that's trying to get in front of those same people with their offers and their business. But landing page views can work really well. Um, simply because it doesn't necessarily uh, cost the most, but it means that somebody has seen your page. And this is why I said at the beginning, it's really important that the next steps after the ad, after the click are in place. So if the ad browses somebody's curiosity and they go like, I want to learn more about this, and then they go to the landing page and that completely talks about something different or you know the whole tone of voice is gone or it is basically a mismatch and people will just click out of it because that's not what they were expecting so it's important to have the ad copy and creative very similar and, and closely related to what they're going to see on the next step which is going to be your landing page now if you have a landing page that actually is optimized well and put together in a way that um, it sort of keeps the scent um, you're going to get better conversion rates and it's always recommended to have uh, have that in place simply because if you just send people to a default page uh, that's not really optimized for conversions, it's going to cost you. Even though the link clicks here or the landing page views are going to be cheaper in terms of advertising spend, if your conversion doesn't um, happen at that second stage where they go to that page, you're still going to pay more because essentially it means that you have to drive more clicks and more traffic to still get that uh, outcome you're looking for. Cool. Um, all right. So uh, messenger, WhatsApp and calls, This, depending on the campaign, like let's say you want people to um, make an inquiry, but availability of, of, of a, an item, for example, or whatever it might be. So this is a good option to, uh, to get them uh, in messenger where they can just quickly send you a message. So I'm sure you've seen these ads where um, it'll say send message. You click on it and it goes into messenger. You get an automatic reply that says, hey, were you looking for information about, you know, what you saw in the ad or whatever it might be? And then sometimes you'll have pre-populated uh, buttons that you can click, yes, no, maybe, whatever it might be. But essentially, this will now open up a messenger conversation with your potential client on your backend where you can now have your messenger app open and you can answer questions there. So a lot of people actually prefer messenger versus uh, phone calls. Uh, same with text messaging. Nobody likes to make phone calls anymore, right? Um, having said that, sometimes for phone calls, um, depending on the audience that you're, like if it's usually like a, an older audience that are still used to you know using phone calls they would much rather have a chat with someone instead of just messaging um it can work i would always say um test test these things right so if you're going to run ads make sure that you test multiple ways of getting in front of somebody so it could be the same ad but one ad could have uh send us a message the other ad could be call us and essentially at the end of a period of time you can see what worked better for your uh objective all right, cool. Um, engagement. This is essentially when you want to get a um, more engagement on the ad itself. So you'll have, for example, post engagement. And one of the reasons this could be important is that uh, it's social proof. So let's say you put an ad out there with a demonstration of a product that you might have. And, you know, it's a, it's a cool video and it's a funny ad, whatever it might be. And what Facebook is trying to do here is send your ads to people who they know are quite often engaged. Like, you know, you'll have some users that never engage and they just read stuff and they never post. But you have a, a set of people on Facebook that always like to share and comment. And regardless if it's a positive or a negative comment, there are people that are always like, you know, uh, frantically typing and, and, and engaging. Now, the, the good thing with these ads is essentially what you can do uh we would call that sort of maturing an ad and we can have an ad that we run and we go for the engagement so that means let's say um within a month that ad has had 100 likes and 100 shares and 200 comments whatever it might be we can now use that same ad but we can switch up a new campaign we can say i want to use this ad now in a campaign that is more targeted for uh, landing page views because what happens is if somebody now scrolls through facebook and they see your ad and they're not quite sure if it's interesting enough for them to click on it. Uh, if there's no comments, there's no engagement on whatsoever in that, that ad, uh, it's much less likely they will actually go and, and say, hey, I want to see what this is about. So the social proof comes with the fact that once you have those uh, shares, likes, comments and everything, you know, it all shows up on the ad itself. Um, now people are going to go, well, 100 other people actually liked and, and, and shared and commented on this. So I might as well go and have a look what this is all about, right? So it's more like a curiosity thing. So you can really... Um, 
mature an ad that way. So it becomes a much more attractive ad, which you can then later use for a different objective. Does it all make sense so far? I think uh, no questions. So that's good. All right, still following. Perfect. Um, leads, this is essentially, um, as the name says, when people want to collect leads for their business or brand. So instant forms can work really well. And what it means is like you might have an offer out there and somebody will see an ad and they're interested. They don't necessarily have to go to a landing page. They can actually click on learn more, for example, or whatever sort of button you have on the ad. And what happens is they're going to um, get a, a form that basically pops up in their screen. And quite often Facebook will already uh, pre-populate depending like the username or, you know, the first name, last name, email address, whatever is associated with that Facebook account. They will already, already fill that out and basically ask the user, is this correct? And these are details you would like to use. People can collect, yes, that's already done. So it makes it easy. So it's, it's a really low barrier of entry. So, you know, people don't have to sit down and, and type in their email address and all that stuff because the easier you make this for somebody, the more conversions you're going to get. So this is what Facebook offers that option. Now, essentially, a form will do nothing more than inform somebody uh, a little bit more about the offer that you have in, uh, in the ad that you mentioned in the ad, and then they can submit. And essentially, you're going to get their details, right? So you can ask uh, as little as first name and email address, but you can also go like first name, last name, email address, phone number, what suburb do you live in? Like there's a whole bunch of questions, like what age are you? Uh, I would always recommend keep it keep it uh, simple. Like the more, like we all we're all very privacy uh, uh, aware, right? So we don't want to give everybody all our information. So the less you ask for people, the better. I would normally recommend just first name, last name, email address, and phone number. Um, basically, because um, that's sort of a a social interaction anyway people you know they don't really mind giving an email address or a phone number but don't ask them how old they are don't ask them what suburb they're in it gets a little bit creepy there um so leads can work really well because what happens now is when somebody fills that in you're going to get a lead in your business manager where the contact information is now stored and you can basically reach out to that lead to say hey i noticed that you filled out an inquiry form on facebook um when have you got when's a good time to chat um Keep in mind that sometimes people do this accidentally, and I, I still don't know after 10 years of running Facebook how somebody can actually go through four or five steps filling out a form, and then when you ring them, they get angry at you because they said, how dare you call me? I never asked you to call me. <laughs> These things still happen, so keep that in mind. Um, okay, so instant forms, now Messenger, once again, Messenger is, um, like I said before, you can run automated uh, questions there as well. And it's essentially more like an interactive form where you can still ask the same questions. And you can still give people an option to click on yes, no, maybe uh, whatever sort of questions you ask them. And then you still get their information, right? So once again, always test. And if that's sort of the objective you want to go for, try one with forms, one with messenger and see which one performs better for you. Um, conversions, this is essentially, um, like I said before, when you're targeting people specifically to really take an action. So submit a form, uh, make an inquiry, send an email, do a phone call, make a purchase, whatever it might be. But keep in mind, conversions are more expensive. They're probably the most expensive uh, objectives you can target on Facebook. All right, next section here, app promotion. Um, this is really for just if you have an app and this will let people, um, you know, try to get people to install an app so Facebook can see who often, who quite often installs apps. And um, yeah, basically you can really get a head start here if you're gonna run a brand new app to get more people in. Uh, sales is then obviously the, like I said, the conversions, where are they? Conversions here, uh, get people to add items to their cart, make a purchase, start a subscription and take any other action on the website or app. Catalog sales is, let's say you've got a, an online store where, you can, you can actually, for example, if you have like Shopify, you can hook up your entire um, store's inventory, your stock to Facebook. So it synchronizes. So let's say somebody's buying a product and it's the last one that you have available. Shopify will then tell Facebook, hey, we're run out of stock. We don't have this anymore. And Facebook will stop running the ad for that specific product. And it'll show something that's quite relevant. Uh, so it's really uh, interesting the way they sort of uh, tackle the issue of, um, you know, getting clicks to a product that doesn't exist anymore. So you're basically wasting money. They actually figure out that it's no longer in stock. So let's try to sell somebody uh, something that's um, very, very similar because at the end of the day, you've already paid for that click. Okay. 
Um, okay, so let's say we're going to go for traffic in this one, right? So I'm setting up a, a bit of a test campaign. Let's go and go traffic. And then we're going to assume that you have a landing page that is ready to go. Um, name your campaign. Uh, one of the main things I would say here is if you have a naming convention, stick to it. Make it easy for you to recognize when you jump into your manager that you can see exactly, oh yeah, this is a traffic campaign and the ad set in here, we're targeting this type of audience and, but I'll get to that next section. So let's say this, this campaign, um, I normally do DC, so it stands out, that's my business digital, uh, digital coach. And it stands out when people look through their business manager, they see, oh, these are the account, uh, these are the campaigns that are being run by my agency. So let's say your digital coach, and then we're going to go, um, landing page views, because essentially that was what we're trying to do in the campaign objective. Now the ad set here is, I'm just gonna put one in here because we're gonna change that later and one in there as well. But you can see once again, the cascading here, uh, campaign level is the top, then the second level there is ad set and the third level is your ad. And that's essentially the three tabs we just talked about. So I'm just gonna hit continue on this one. <clears throat> no questions yet, perfect. And I haven't even had coffee today. Imagine that. Normally, I'm just rambling. <laughs> All right. You can see, once again, cascading, campaign level, ad set level, and the ad. So we just created this initial campaign template. And there's a few other options here that we can choose now. Um, we don't have to declare any categories. This is really if you're in a very specific category, which I think they're going to get rid of soon anyway. Uh, so this is like for politics, elections, et cetera. So this is a big thing in the US. So uh, you really have to make sure that you check that button if or that box if you say I'm running ads for you know a political candidate, for example. So you can safely skip this and just say 99% uh, of small businesses don't have to do anything with this. Uh, the buying type here is just an auction. Uh, you can't make any other cho uh, choices there. Objective, once again, we selected it in the beginning. So I'm just going to leave that as this. Um, you can always change it before you, you know, if you change your mind halfway through before you publish, you can still make a change. After you publish, you can't make any more changes. So keep that in mind. Um, and that's just to your campaign level. It's not, you're, you can still change your ad and your ad sets. You just can't change the campaign level uh, because based on what you choose in here, uh, some of the features will be enabled. Some of the features will be gone from your next tabs. Um, A-B testing. This is essentially if you have a bit of a bigger budget. Um, A-B testing means nothing more than Facebook trying to um, use different um, ads to see what works better. So you'd, you would have like what we call a control ad, which is like your main or your master ad or whatever you want to call it. And then there's going to be a, var a variable or a variant that's going to be slightly different. It might be a different image, different photo, different video, whatever it might be. Everything else stays the same, but usually for A-B testing, you need a bit of a bigger budget because the, the more data Facebook gets, um, the smarter they become and they can really give you a, a proper outcome. But for smaller budgets, I would always go for the advantage campaign. And what this means is that if you turn that on, um, your budget for a day or a lifetime gets set at the campaign level, which means if you tell Facebook, I don't want to spend more than $20, $30 a day, uh, that's fine. You set it at the campaign level. And then no matter how many ad sets you put underneath that campaign, uh, whatever $30 you have at the campaign level will get evenly distributed across all the ad sets that you have underneath there. Does that make sense? This is a bit of a tricky one. Where's our coffee? <laughs> Hi, Eric. Um, so essentially, once you have that set up, uh, always, always turn it on because this is where you're telling Facebook, okay, I trust you. I trust your AI. I trust your, you know, your, your genius. Uh, I want you to figure out what, which ad set works better than the others, because what they do, let's say you got three ad sets within that campaign. You got $30 a day. Initially, they're going to spend $10 on each ad set, but they quickly figure out, Hey, we believe that ad set B or C is actually performing better than the other two. And they're going to start funneling that $30 to the one that is more likely to actually uh, get the conversion you're looking for. Always, always turn it on because essentially you're making use of uh, the AI and computer learning and, and all that fancy stuff. Okay. Um, bit strategy here, not really that important, especially when you get started. So just go for highest volume. Uh, when you get a bit more uh, into Facebook and you kind of understand how bid caps work, which means that you can set um, you can set budgets for for the auction, right? So if the auction happens uh, in in real time, and Facebook needs to decide, are we going to show advertiser A or B for the next ad? Um, one of the things that if you would have a very high bid cap here, you can essentially outbid the other guy, right? So the other guy might be running a highest volume. 
if you have a bit cap to say, well, normally with highest volume, the average sort of cost per click might be five bucks, but I'm willing to give you $10 uh, Facebook uh, if you show my ad instead. Now, what that means is you're not actually paying $10, but Facebook will favor your ad and you might actually pay $5.25. It, it's just a little bit higher than what the other person, the other advertiser was trying to bid for. So you can kind of bully other advertisers out of uh, visibility because you're basically outbidding them in every single uh, ad. Now, keep that in mind that if you're going to run this and you're going up against people that actually know how Facebook works, you might get starting a bidding more and you can end up paying way more than you should for those for those things. And this is why I always say, if you get started, just go for highest volume. Facebook will still try and find a way to spend your money. Uh, and for most of the people out there, uh, it's fine if you, you know, you, you won't go up against somebody in, in the areas that you're working in or, or even the location. Uh, this is really for high-end brands um, that have hundreds of thousands or even millions of dollars in outspend. So keep that as is. Um, now once we're happy with this, so we're going to spend $20 a day. Um, you can choose between daily and lifetime. Um, the biggest difference is if you choose lifetime, you can make some options here to say, when do I want to show my ads? Um, I'm just going to go with daily because essentially uh, that's the easiest way to get it done for you guys. Make sure that your money on there, um, your budget is, is set the way you want it. And then we're going to jump through to the next section. Uh, and if you're confused about where you are, if you're in your campaign level, uh, ad sub level of your ad, you can always see whatever is highlighted. That's obviously your campaign. Then the next one we're going to go to is your ad set. All right, any questions on any of that stuff? You guys are great. There's no questions. I love it. <laughs> All right. So the next section in here, we can see we are now in the ad set. And an ad set is essentially where we do certain things like targeting. And what I mean with targeting is like the audiences we want to get in front of, right? So if we now want to uh, pick and choose a conversion location, so we, we selected, um, as you can remember, we selected traffic in the campaign level. So that means now basically Facebook is asking us, where do you want to send that traffic? Uh, we want to send it to a website, an app, uh, messenger, phone call, or whatever. So I'm going to go website. And then essentially a little bit down the track, it'll actually ask us where you want to send people. Uh, but I'm just going to get, skip that for now. Um, next section here, dynamic creative. If you turn this on, this is like a mini A-B test because essentially what it does is instead of having to create five or 10 different ads yourself, you can create one ad. And you can add like five headlines, uh, up to 10 different pieces of um, uh, creative. So <clears throat> 10 different photos. You can have like five different call to actions, which is like learn more, um, contact us. Uh, we'll get to that. But if, as, if you don't turn this on, you won't have that option or you'll have a very limited option. But if you turn this on, essentially you create one ad and you have all the ingredients are there. And every time Facebook shows your ad to somebody, they're mixing it up and they're trying to figure out Let's combine this element. So let's combine this this photo with this headline and this piece of body copy. And then we're going to change the um, the call to action button. And every time they serve an ad, it'll be a mix. And what they try and figure out is which of these elements are actually getting more results. So over time, you'll see in the dashboard that, hey, all, out of all these elements, these are the two headlines that are getting the most clicks. These are the two photos that are getting more clicks than the other ones. And you can start refining your campaigns afterwards and then really build a campaign that is focused around the stuff that was working for you. Um, it saves a lot of time. It is just an easier way of doing things. Um, back in the day, we really had to do everything manually. So we'd have to come up, you know, 5, 10, 20 different ads we'd have to put together and then we'd have to go in and figure out what's working. But we only knew which ads were working. We didn't necessarily know which uh, elements of those ads were actually um, causing those those clicks. So just click that on. Uh, then the optimization and delivery here, like we said before, uh, landing page views, right? So it, it defaults to link clicks because that's probably the cheaper way of doing things. But I would always recommend go for at least landing page views. It's a, it's a step up. And we know at least that people have seen the page we're sending them to. If it still doesn't work after they've seen that page, we know that, hey, maybe we need to make some changes on that on that, on that landing page. And, and once again, you can test these as well. You can have two different landing pages you would send people to to see which one works better. You always want to be testing when you run ads. You always want to have at least one variant 
um, and see what works better because otherwise you, you won't be able to improve anything because if you just have one ad, one ad set, one landing page, and then obviously whatever outcome you get from that, you never know if that's the best possible outcome you could have had or if it's the worst because you don't have anything to benchmark it against. So always have like at least two different things running at any given time in your entire funnel. All right, um, so I'm gonna go landing page views here. And then this is something because we selected the highest volume, this is where you would normally put your bid in if you actually do the bid capping. But for now, that's grayed out. We can't do anything, which is fine. Um, and you're going to get charged per impression. So the way Facebook charges us is every time a thousand impressions have been made on your ad, they will, um, depending on the CPM, which is your cost per meal. Um, so if you would have, for example, um, a reach objective, and that just means like they're just going to show your ads to everybody who you tell them to show your ads to, and that's going to be really cheap. So your CPM might be $2 there. So you're for every thousand impressions, you only pay two bucks. If you would optimize for something like a conversion, like a purchase, um, your CPM is going to go up quite significantly, which means that uh, all of a sudden for those thousand impressions, now you're paying 15, 20, $30, because essentially you're trying to get Facebook to find people who are more likely to turn into uh, a new client. So that's a much more valuable conversion. So this is, especially with smaller budgets, I would always recommend warm things up. So start off with a, a cheaper one and then start doing things like building audiences based on people who have interacted with your ad, your website, your page, your, your whatever it might be. And you can build an audience that you know is more inclined to, uh, they're at least they're more interested in your product than just random people. And you sort of build up on the information you get from your first ad, then you build a new ad based on that information to say, okay, we now know that um, iPhone users are much more likely to convert and click on our links than Android users, for example. So you can now in your next ad, you can say, well, actually, when, we don't want to show this to Android users, we just want to get iPhone users. So as you go, you learn from the previous ads and you basically start refining everything. Um, does it all make sense so far? I mean, it makes sense to me and, and don't be shy. Just ask me anything if you want to stop me at any given time, because I know that this is easy for me because I've been doing this for 10 years. If you're new to this, it might just be like information overload. Um, okay, budget scheduling. This is essentially start date, end date. So you can just automatically set it to say, well, let's say I've got a webinar running uh, on Saturday, nine o'clock, and I can tell Facebook, I would like you to stop running these ads uh, an hour before my actual event starts. So you don't have to look at that again. Then the audiences. Audiences are important, um, very important, simply because this is this is you telling Facebook, okay, I want you to show my ad to these people specifically. Uh, and this is where you can make certain things like location, ages, genders. Uh, you can go a little bit more detailed and say demographics, interests, and behaviors. Now, if you don't have any data, no audiences, one of the things that I would normally recommend, I'm just going to go to the left-hand side here on the old tool section, and then I'm going to open up the audiences button here in a new tab. Um, when you have no audience, when you're basically just saying to Facebook, well, oh, male, female between 30 and 50 living in Perth, that's great, but it's really broad and generic. Um, in here, you can you can create audiences. So, and this is also what I mentioned before with the naming conventions. You can see pretty much straight away from the way I named this, this is an Australian audience, people between 35 and 55, they're male and female, and they have an affinity of small business owners. So this would be an, an audience that I can start running ads to, right? So once you've created this, um, this is what's called a uh, saved audience. The next level up, if you have a client list, so let's say you've got, I don't know, you've been in business for a few years and you've got maybe a thousand email addresses of clients that have worked with you in the past in, in some shape or form, and these are still your ideal type of clients. You can, for example, create an audience here that's a custom audience. And now you get options to say, well, Facebook is going to ask you, okay, what's your source? So you can, for example, say anybody who's visited my website in a specific time, or you can go a bit more granular in there to say anybody who visited my website uh, or a specific page on my website, right? So, and this is where the pixel comes in. So if the pixel is installed on, on any of your online assets. Uh, you can now say, I want to make an audience of people who, for example, visited a specific page, which could have been... Um, the let's say you got a store and they, they went all the way through the uh, checkout, but then before they purchased, they saw the shipping costs and they dropped out. So you could, for example, say, I just want to make an audience of people in the last, I don't know, 60 days. I think this goes up to 185. 
of 180. So you can build an audience. People, let's say in the last 180 days, who visited a specific page, and then the URL of that page contains, uh, and this could be um, checkout, right? So you know, for example, that somebody actually went all the way through to a page that was called checkout, and usually that's a unique URL. So you know for a fact they went to the checkout, they filled in the details, and they left. So what I can do, build an audience based on those people. And I can then say to Facebook, I would like you to send an ad to only these people in this audience. And that ad might be something along the lines of uh, free shipping in the next 24 hours. And this is where people freak out and go like, oh my God, Facebook is listening to my phone calls because I was just talking to a friend about how I nearly bought this thing and I didn't go through with it. We know that usually shipping costs is, is, is a big deterrent in terms of when people, you know, they, they, they buy a product for a hundred bucks and they don't, want, they don't want to pay an extra $15 on shipping, but they don't know that until they get to the very uh, checkout page. So this is where you can retarget things. Really make sure that you, you build out audiences based on, um, where your visitor has gone if that makes sense and then figure out what the objection might have been that they didn't continue and then send them only them a specific ad that might handle that objection so they can come back to your page and potentially still make that purchase for example now if you have a customer list <laughs> excuse me this is what i was going to get to if you have a customer list essentially you can upload your your clients into facebook and it's all encrypted it's all private like facebook can't actually read any of that data However, what they can do is if I would upload a customer list and you can import it from MailChimp if you have MailChimp or you can download a template where you can fill out all the information. Um, essentially what happens here is let's say a thousand people get added to Facebook this way. I can then go and I won't go through that section here now, but what I can do is I can tell Facebook create a lookalike audience. And what that means is, uh, as the name suggests, uh, I can pick a source here and I can say, let's say this is my client list that I've just uploaded. And so there's a thousand people in there, um, you know, client list up to November 2022, let's say. Obviously, it's not in there, so it's not going to show anything. But let's say you got a, a client list updated. And now what I can say is, oh, let me remove that because otherwise this window won't disappear. No, let me cancel that. Sorry, it's a bit annoying. Let me try it again. Look like audience. So let's say I, I create my existing audience or data source here. Then what I can say is, well, I want to create another Australian audience. And then I can say, um, you can see here the, the percentages, right? So essentially, if I go all the way to 10%, um, 2.2 2 million, uh, is that correct? Yeah. So essentially, let's say I'm going to build out two different audiences. And, and this is what the reason I would do two different audiences is because I'm always testing, right? I'm always sending um, one ad to or the same ad to these people and then the same ad to those people and see which one actually performs better. So let's say I'm going to create two lookalike audiences from Australia. And you can see the 10% here is essential. Oh, it says here a 1% lookalike consists of the people most similar to your lookalike audience source. Uh, increasing the percentage increases uh, creates a bigger and more broad audience. So the closer I get to the 1% here, these people have more affinity with the people in your client list than if I would go all the way down to, let's say, 10%. So the closer to the zero, the more similar these people become, and the further away I go is the less similarities these people have. So if I would create two very tight audiences of 220 each, so essentially, this is what I would do. I would create an audience. And what Facebook does is in Australia, they're going to say, well, we're going to pick 220,000 people in audience one, 220,000 people in audience two. And we can now use those later to actually build our campaigns. So lookalike audience can be really powerful simply because um, the same way Facebook optimizes our ads when I said initially that if they see 50 events coming through uh, in a week like purchases, they're going to start targeting people that are very similar to those people, right? So this is the same thing. You're basically telling Facebook, here's a, uh, a client list that I know uh, are, are my ideal clients. They've actually paid me at one stage. So go find me very similar people because what happens now is you can choose that audience to run the ads and you're going to get a much better conversion rate simply because these are very similar people. Does that all make sense so far? Uh, is this the A-B testing or another version of varying ads? Um, Eric, can you... 
rephrase that. I'm not 100% sure. So this is a type of A-B testing, but it's not the A-B testing we saw in the campaign level. This is more like a manual A-B testing as we would run, um, so to speak. Um, okay, I'm just going to close up the audiences section here because let's say we've built out that audience and I'm going to go back to my ads manager here. Uh, let's close that one up. So now it's going to ask us, okay, where do you want to send these ads to for that landing page view campaign? So if I'm going to search my audiences here, uh, I'm going to have to use a saved audience. I'm going to click that one and it'll put those people in here now. And essentially they're going to target Australians 35 to 55 and their behavior typically is like that of a small business owner. Um, you can see the right answer. <coughs> Sorry, let me get some water. I love these webinars, so much talking and a dry, dry throat. Um, so the estimated audience size here would be between 165 and 194,000. Now, if that's a really small audience, if we get anywhere between say 50 and 100,000 or less, that's gonna be really small. And the smaller the audience is, the harder it is for Facebook to actually give you a good price on conversions. So what I would normally do is if that's a pretty small audience, you can turn the advantage detail targeting, uh, close that up. You can actually hit edit and then say, I want to, uh, where did they hide it? Here we go. So if I would say this is the detailed targeting, but I would also like to turn this section on here. Now I'm actually not sure why they're not letting me, uh, maybe I have to remove that. No, because, no, it's probably because it's a saved audience. Um, so ignore that. But essentially when you check this box, you're going to tell Facebook, okay, first and foremost, I would like you to look at the people that I've given you. But if you can't find um, conversions that I'm looking for at the price point that I've given you at the budget, um, I'm basically giving Facebook permission to skirt outside of the audience that I've given them. And now what they're going to do is they're going to try and figure out who is still quietly, uh, quite um, uh, has a lot of affinity with the people that you're initially targeting. And they're basically doing that that, uh, that slide at a 1%, 2%, 3%, et cetera. And they basically start... Um, rippling out to try and find people to still make sure that they can still spend your budget uh, and still get you the conversions. So when you just check that on, uh, yeah, just, just leave that on. Um, just wary of the time already. This I should really make these longer. All right, so placements. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. <clears throat> Essentially, when you know what you're doing, you want to do manual placements and you can then pick and choose where you want to, when you ask the show. <clears throat> um, if you that's only when you know what you're doing so for a fact um for example the feeds the facebook feed and the instagram feed are, are by far the most popular the most prominent um ad placements the problem is you're going to pay more for that because other advertisers also know this and they want to try to get into the facebook feed now if you got to run and you kind of know what you're doing this is what you would initially do and then for example you're retargeting ads you can put them into the right hand column which is usually you know on a desktop obviously the right hand column but quite often that doesn't have as much visibility, which means it's a cheaper um, ad to run. Uh, but the chances of you getting those conversions are also going to be lower. So I would normally say, once again, if you know what you're doing, get into this. If you're new, just use the advantage plus placements. Everything that is like this little star icon and plus icon behind it, that's basically Facebook's AI and computer learning and all that stuff. And just let them do the, the heavy lifting. All right. Does it all make sense so far? <clears throat> Then we're going to jump into the last tab, which is your ads. So let's say we have the campaign budget, uh, uh, budget set up. We understand the targeting. So we're going to get traffic. We set it up to get landing page views. We've defined our audience. And the next section here, oh, one more thing, by the way. Um, so the audience here that we created, just copy that, whatever you've named that, and then your ad set name, that's what you want to give that uh, as a name. Reason being, when I jump into my dashboard, I don't have to jump in and click in and go through the, all these these um, the actual ad sets themselves. I can see from the title what audience they're actually targeting, and I can say here, for example, we have the um, detail targeting is off, so advanced detail targeting um, off, and I can have one that has on, and this will be another split test. So you can have basically two audiences, very similar. One of them is on, one of them is off, and then you you, you should start seeing results in terms of what's what's converting better. All right, so let's jump into the next section then, which is going to be your ad. And 
on the right hand side is a little ad preview just flick that on <clears throat> because essentially this will give you an idea of what it's going to look like right so I would use dynamic creative here so dynamic uh creative like we just turned on in the previous section and you'll see uh once we get to the uh, ad point well, you'll see what I mean so you select a page here and you know I, I don't even think my page is on here it might be on my personal one I, I don't actually I don't ironically enough I don't run ads for myself um so you can pick your page your account and what it means is once your ad starts showing it'll be shown as the page um that you're running these ads from now you can have a few things manual upload <clears throat> um sometimes when you're connected to your Shopify store this will be available and it'll actually pick your product uh, photos etc but for now we're going to keep it super simple um an option for formatting is either a single image or video or a carousel I would prefer a carousel simply because it actually gives us more options to get clicks in the same ad spot um so use carousel and then what you can do here is you can add your website in there and I don't have any images on my website. My, my website basically says, hey, we're not, not accepting new clients at the moment, and there's, there's nothing else to see. If you have another website, it'll actually, Facebook will go through your website and see whatever images you have on there, and they might actually pick some of those images. Um, other than that, I would just have to go into add images, and I've already got a few here, so I'm going to pick that one, that one, and maybe, I don't know, that one. So let's pick those three images. And essentially what you'll start seeing is once I put the destination link in so let's I'm just going to put my website in there uh, digital coach .co. <clears throat> so that's essentially my uh, website and now you can see that the preview pops up on the right hand side here right and the carousel means that can you see what I mean you got the extra sort of ads within your ad so people can you can have multiple photos in here and then multiple call to actions etc so I would recommend carousel versus um the single image or video um yeah so you basically can upload up to 10 images and you can see these are all sort of different dimensions right now because we have automated placements sometimes they won't they, they'll crop weirdly so you can actually go into for example one of your photos with that little thing and say I want to crop this image and then you can pick and choose if you want to make it you know this would be the Instagram feed uh, or this would be uh, horizontal would be more for like a desktop etc cetera, etc cetera. so you can sort of do a little bit of adjusting if you want um, just keep in mind that it will show differently on every different device that is out there so your primary text um this would be your body copy so text number one and you can see in the right hand side that your ad will come up here you can add then another text option to say for example I'm going to be text number two and text number three and what happens is these are the elements that Facebook will now mix and match to say every time we show an ad we're going to show a different one of these different primary texts to see what works better headlines same thing so we're going to have headline one uh we can then have head, uh, headline number two and essentially the headlines are uh down here so you can see where it says chat with us and these would change every time you have an ad running based on what you've put in the headlines here description um this really doesn't get used that much but you can basically just say the same thing as your as your um your headline simply because some devices will actually show show a description uh see it down here for example um or you know limited spots whatever you sort of want to put in there but it's a very um you can't make like a, a massive sentence in there it's simply did I spell available right probably not doesn't matter just see see how it gets cut off here so it's really a very limited um limited spot some devices might show a little bit more but most of them will actually just cut that off a website URL is obviously important this is where you're going to send people so this wouldn't be your home page this would be your landing page so remember what I said in the beginning your ad needs to get people curious about a specific thing you're trying to get them curious about they need to get the click when they go to the landing page that needs to be very very similar to what the ad basically promised them um, so make sure that you have a landing page for every service that you have that is completely tailored towards the ad or vice versa it needs to be as if um it, there's, there's a continuance um happening there uh no other questions so far very good call to actions um 
Oh, sorry, uh, URL parameters. You can click on that one. And there's two things you probably want to do here. So the first one is the campaign source. Now, everything you see that the link up here is very, it's, it's basically a normal link. But if, as soon as I add the um, dynamics in here, it'll slightly change. So very simple campaign source, just choose the very bottom one, which is the site source name. This will help you identify the source of traffic if it's Facebook, Instagram, or anything else. And then campaign medium is the other one that I use, which essentially is placement. So the second one from bottom. And because it's between brackets, what it means is that your my URL at the bottom here, you can see the preview now has actually changed. So it's added a UTM source. And if you're looking at analytics or stats or anything like that, this will help um, those tools filter out. Let's say somebody shared your Facebook ad in an email, right? They copied the link to your ad in an email and they send it through to a friend <coughs> and their friend clicks and opens up that link in their email. It means that you can see in your analytics, hey, this actually got opened through email and not an ad. So you know for a fact that even though uh, the ad itself um, brought you the conversion, it actually was shared up via email and somebody in an inbox actually opened that up. So this will give you some, some good indication. Campaign name and um, content, I just leave open. Um, but otherwise you just fill in the one that your you know, campaign name is campaign name here. But quite often this will already, um, like this is a bit granular. So I would normally just want to know placement and campaign medium. So I'm just going to hit apply. And then before you run ads, <clears throat> make sure that when you click uh, preview URL, that it actually loads. Sometimes, depending on your web host, it doesn't always load. Um, as you can see, like I said, I don't have any any images on my on my website. Um, but make sure that it loads. And when you're happy with that, you can have some call to actions. Um, <clears throat> contact us, learn more, whatever you sort of feel like you want people to take action on. And then the most important part here <coughs> is the website events. This is your pixel. If I uncheck that, Basically, Facebook is not going to associate whatever traffic I sent to my landing page with the pixel, and they're never going to learn how to optimize. So always make sure you check that and make sure that this is the pixel ID that's installed on your website. So once you're happy with all of that, all you'd have to do is hit publish. It goes into the review queue. If there's an issue, Facebook will let you know. If not, they will start your campaign for you. Um, and that's really it. That really is your initial ad that you would set up with Facebook. Let me just stop sharing my screen here because we don't need that anymore. And yeah, so I hope that was useful. So understand that your ad has one function, which is get the click, then it needs to go to the landing page, which is very similar to what you were talking about on your uh, ad copy. <clears throat> um, your audiences need to be uh, dialed in. So you need to understand that you're actually sending the right ad to the right people. Uh, make sure that your pixel tracking is always running to make sure that you're actually going to make the most out of your Facebook ads and understand that um, sometimes you'll have to start maturing an ad or an audience or the pixel even to get more information. The more data Facebook gets, so the more traffic basically it gets generated, the smarter it becomes. And now you can start building up targeting, retargeting stuff and, and all that kind of uh, good stuff that Facebook gives us. All right, any questions? We've got a couple of minutes. Any questions? I'll open those up uh, now. But if not, uh, let me know. That's fine as well. <clears throat> Yeah, so <clears throat> awareness campaign. Um, the only reason I would start it is if I was brand new, uh, didn't have any data, no pixel data, and essentially to make them outside of a smaller budget, that's what I would get started with. But make sure that you actually build an audience a custom audience based on the information that those ads initially get. So anybody who might click on a link, visit your page, um, like the like the ad, comment on the ad, you can build an audience based on those because now you know these are people that are so, somewhat engaged and the next ad you would run, your next campaign, you'd have a different objective, but you would actually target that audience specifically. Yeah, there's a lot of info. I know, like I've been doing this for... 10 years, uh, Facebook ads by itself. And I still learn new things every day and they keep adding new tools and features and they take things away. So, but generally speaking, if you understand how marketing works and how you really can warm up somebody from cold prospect that is, you know, problem unaware to uh, solution unaware all the way to uh, making a decision who they want to work with, this is what Facebook can really do well for you because the first ads you'd be putting out there is raising awareness. Once you know that somebody is engaged with that, the next step there is nurturing and really 
showing people what's possible. So because now they've identified, they've self-identified the issue that they might have. Now they're looking for a solution. If your ads, your follow-up ads actually start showing them that, hey, there are ways of fixing whatever you're trying to fix. Uh, the next phase for them is to be a consideration where it's now, hey, I've seen this person on Facebook and they their first ad made me think about, oh, the thing which I just thought was just a thing, but now I understand that this is actually something that can be fixed or or you know, improved. Um, the next, you basically take them through those steps because, and then they go like, um, let's say the third or fourth ad that you send those people specifically would be, hey, why don't you book a call with me? Because now they're basically, they've educated themselves. You've educated them to a point where they now can go, I understand how this works and I want to have a call with you. All right, cool. If that all makes sense, if not, feel free to send me an email. Uh, I do uh, quite often get emails after the session to say, oh, can you repeat this thing one more time or that thing one more time or how would it work specifically in my situation? Uh, remember that um, if you're part of the digital solutions program, if not, um, I would highly recommend you to sign up because you can get three hours one-on-one -on -one time with myself or one of the other advisors and really specifically get into your business manager and figure out what would work for you. All right. Having said that, it's 11 o'clock. It's uh, I've, I want, I run this uh, Facebook one every two weeks. It, it, one week I do Google, um, Google by business and the next week I do Facebook. So it, it um, alternates between two weeks. All right. Perfect. Um, I'm going to say everybody have a wonderful Tuesday and I might see you in the next one. See you. Bye-bye.